first off, I think, uh, you know, for everybody that takes the time to uh, to come out to the uh, the weekly webinar, uh, we really appreciate your time and we, we hope to make it uh, to make it worth it. Uh, we've got a, a good training, uh, kind of a, a different webinar scheduled and planned here for uh, for tonight. Uh, we'll cover some of this basic information here uh, for anybody that's new. We have uh, new people that are coming in all the time. So uh, if there is anybody that's new, uh, you probably have heard different uh, videos that we've produced or different webinars that we've done at different points. Uh, I'm Shade Foray. I've got Steven Swenson here with me. Good uh, evening, everyone. We're business partners. Um, we conduct the trainings every week. Um, we uh, created the the program. We wrote the program, and and uh, we've been involved with uh, with tax sales for uh, about the last 15 years. So uh, we've got a lot of experience with it, uh, and uh, sometimes we forget when people are coming in new uh, that it's a brand new experience for you. So if we happen to fly by anything, uh, you know, it's always okay to ask questions. You know, that's the that's the great thing about the format with the webinars is you can always ask questions. Uh, there's all of the uh, the pertinent information. Oh, the one thing I was going to say is with Hotline. Uh, uh, one thing that we would ask, if you can, is if it's possible, try to send us an email before you call in, uh, just letting us know what your topic is about or maybe what it's uh, related to so that we can try to prepare for it. Uh, you know, if we know uh, what it is specifically that you're looking for, then that gives us the chance to uh, to look it up. Or if it's something simple, we might be able to tell you right away. But if uh, if we can prepare before the time we talk, it, it, uh, it always makes it more effective. So, uh, you know, if you can, uh, send us an email. That an email is always a fast way to get a hold of us anyway, because uh, we can get an email anytime. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, there are different times when the phone might be tied up or where it might be uh, away from it for a minute. All right. So the focus for the training here tonight uh, is pretty specific. Uh, and it's specific for good reason. Uh, Texas tends to be uh, among the states that are most popular in the country to invest in uh, related to tax sales. Texas is a pretty popular state. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to dive uh, into a lot of specifics tonight. So we're going to cover a lot of ground tonight. And uh, in talking about how Texas operates, but then also talking about how to locate sales, uh, how to locate uh, opportunities with the sales, but then also how to locate uh, different opportunities, over-the-counter opportunities, uh, and uh, we'll have a chance to look at some of those as well, too. So let's just take a minute to talk about property tax enforcement in Texas. So we can get some of the, the, the basic laws that Texas uh, state laws cover. Um, we would consider Texas to be a redemption deed state. Uh, you know, there are the three property tax systems, liens, deeds, and then redemption deeds. Uh, and redemption deeds are kind of a hybrid between the, uh, the tax liens and deeds. We know that there are tax deeds that have a redemption period attached to them meaning that the county goes through and essentially forecloses on the property, offers it at auction, but following the sale, uh, after a person has bought it and, and taken possession of the property, there is still a redemption period, a period of time there where property owners may have the chance to redeem. Now, if they do that, they're gonna have to pay off a lot of taxes and fees. And in Texas, part of what makes the state popular is that they have this flat 25% penalty rate. Uh, that penalty rate uh, is uh, what attracts a lot of people because it means if the property redeems, uh, it's going to earn that flat 25% if it's been less than a year. Uh, it can earn 50% uh, if it's been over a year. So uh, there's an opportunity to earn a pretty good return there, but the redemption period uh, is a little bit more complicated. The redemption period is either six months or two years. Um, that's dependent upon homestead property laws and whether or not you're dealing with the homestead property. Uh, I'm sure some of you probably have questions about what that might mean, uh, homestead properties. Every state has laws that are written, uh, that have been enacted over the years to try to protect homeowners. You know, so in other words, uh, what they're trying to protect homeowners from is a person that 
uh, lives in their house. They're trying to protect them from losing their house quickly to some type of foreclosure. So they have certain laws that are um, referred to as homestead property laws sometimes. What they really mean is, is if a property is owner occupied, if it's, um, there are typically a number of qualifications that a property has to, to uh, uh, they have to meet those qualifications in order to classify as, as a homestead property. And being owner occupied is one of them. Um, really, the, you know, in Texas, there's, there's two groups of people that are going to apply to the two year, that two year redemption period. You know, first is like Shade said, the homestead properties, and that's going to be anyone if it's their if it's their single family home, if it's their primary residence, really if it's the only home they own, uh, chances are it could be a homestead property, so it might have that two year redemption period. Also, Texas wants to protect the the personal homeowner, so they give them a two year, and they also want to protect the farm, the farmer. And so for farmland, they've also given that two year redemption period because they don't want a farmer uh, to lose his land after six months of being laid on their delinquent taxes. So they've given them a two year redemption period as well. Uh, but besides those two individuals, uh, any type of secondary property, rental property, and you'd be, elite, you'd be surprised by how many of those type of properties come up for auction uh, because maybe, uh, you know, five or 10 years ago, somebody got interested in getting involved in real estate and bought a rental property in Texas, and they ended up moving to California or wherever. And, you know, they can no longer, they no longer pay the property taxes and they ended up losing it. Uh, any type of uh, commercial properties and really any type of land except for uh, a working farm, a working farmland is going to have that six month redemption period, uh, which means that you can acquire the property within six months. In addition to that, as we're talking about Texas property law, uh, a lot of it is going to be similar to other redemption deed states like Georgia. Uh, Georgia is another uh, redemption deed state. They have a 20% flat penalty with a one-year redemption period. Uh, and so, you know, as, you, as we're talking about Texas, if there's another redemption deed state that may be in your area, many of these same type of strategies will apply to it. Yeah. And... and as for what you'd be looking for investing in in Texas, I guess part of the reason why it's appealing is because you can invest for property, which you should certainly be doing if you're investing uh, in, in Texas. You should be investing for property. But the idea is if it redeems, then you come out of it pretty well. You know, if it redeems, that's a quick turnaround on your money. OK, so, uh, you know, within six months, it turns around and, and you make 25 percent on your money. You know, that's that's what is appealing about it. Uh, you know, within that time period. Now, if it goes past that, then you automatically have, uh, you know, you, you essentially have the right to sell the property. That's the only thing that really changes is 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 your right to uh, to sell the property after that time period. Um, you still have the right to occupy the property. You could rent it out, but you have to be prepared to vacate or leave the property if if it redeems. Uh, you know, which is a, you know a possibility within that time frame. Yes, so. essentially, what you know, the county, you will get a t tax deed at the end of the auction. But what the county is going to do with, is they're not they're going to hold on to that deed. They're not going to record it with the county recorder until after that redemption period is passed. So once that redemption period is passed, then they'll go ahead and issue that with the county recorder. They'll record the deed and they'll issue the deed in your name. Uh, mm -hmm. But during that time, you're going to have many ownership rights, like Shade said. Yeah. Now, uh, we want to dive into uh, into really we want to talk a lot about uh, locating some of the lists here and, and uh, some of the systems that Texas has in place. Uh, Texas conducts their sales as live auctions, uh, so the sales are all conducted. Um, well, I guess we'll get into it, but I believe it's the first Tuesday. Is that for all, yeah. all counties? Or is that most yeah. counties? All counties. So all counties sell, uh, you know, have their auctions held on the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, you know, so basically every single county you can plan on, uh, they're going to have properties that are uh, that are foreclosing on a regular basis. Now, Texas also holds multiple sales. Properties that didn't sell at the first sale are going to be offered again at a resale. Uh, if they're offered, and I don't know whether it's uh, whether it's just one time, <laughs> two times, eventually, if they're offered enough times, they're going to be uh, struck off. 
or they'll be included in the struck off list, uh, which essentially means over the counter. It means that the properties can be uh, purchased uh, for what's owed in, in taxes and fees, right? Yeah. Now, um, I just put this in here because it'll, uh, I think it'll relate as we're looking at, at, at some of the different counties. The biggest counties in Texas are uh, Bexar, Dallas, Harris, Tarrant, and Travis. You can see that the, the population for those counties is upwards of uh, 11, 12 million people. Now, this is where we're going to start to get into uh, locating the lists and uh, how exactly Texas operates in terms of advertising lists. Because they hold live sales, but they still advertise their lists uh, online. Now, Texas, uh, the well, I guess, is it all law firm? I mean, is it all the counties? Most of them will have some type of, I mean, some have it in-house. Yeah. Uh, but most counties will use, you know, one of these three different law firms for 80% of the tax sales. Yeah, so basically what's happening is they're hiring out law firms to advertise their lists for them and... Uh, and well, do uh, foreclosures. Yeah, do the foreclosures. The, you know, really conduct all the legal work on behalf of the county. So it's basically easier for them to do that maybe than, uh, than to have uh, all that done in-house. But in some cases, the counties still do that in-house. So uh, it's both ways. But for a lot of the counties that, that, uh, that hire it out there, they'll use one of these three one of these three law firms. We're going to end up uh, focusing on one of them specifically. Now, uh, the web addresses for these law firms, you can see right here, uh, the one that we're going to actually focus on is going to be uh, Linebarger, Goggin, Blair, and Sampson. They've got some crazy names here for uh, uh, the partners that are involved. Uh, but that's the one that we're going to focus on here, which is uh, which you can find at publicans.com. So publicans.com, when you go to the primary, you know, the homepage, it looks like this. Uh, you can see, you know, the, I've got the arrow pointing there to the property tax sales. This is where we're going to go to see about the, uh, the sales that they've got coming up. Now, this particular law firm handles sales in more than just uh, Texas. They handle some sales in Pennsylvania and some sales in Tennessee as well. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Texas sales here, though, uh, specifically today. You know, and one thing just to quickly mention is that, you know, when you're a member of property tax list, we go through and we download all of these lists and provide them for you every month. Yeah, and that's just one of the advantages is you don't have to try to go to 50 or 100 or 200 different websites trying to find lists. Uh, we've already got these connections set up, and so you just need to go to property tax list, and that's where we'll have all of these available for you. Yeah, in fact, you know, traditionally in the past, we haven't really had this website um uh, direct link on on property tax list because it's uh, it takes a little bit to navigate it and, and we would usually just grab a lot of lists for uh, for Texas but if you're interested specifically in Texas this is going to be the most effective way to uh, to do this it's a, I think it's a matter of just learning the system and uh, becoming familiar with it now when we uh, when we click on that tax cell uh, link it pulls us up here to the FA uh, to like a frequently asked questions section here. And if you were to scroll down, it, it, it has a lot of FAQs. If you're planning on getting involved in Texas, uh, at some point it's gonna be worth your time to read through it and, and to learn. I mean, because you'd be surprised how many questions you can get answered there before you ever start. So if you're, you know, if you're planning on starting in, uh, in Texas or you're interested in Texas, it's worth the time to read through it. But the actual listing itself is, uh, is, is right there. So we wanna see the system for the listings. And what pulls up here is uh, what the law firm uses as a type of tax sell search tool. Okay, so uh, we have a number of, of different variables that we can use to search here. Uh, we, we can choose between different types of sales or different types of lists, essentially. And then we can also choose from the different counties. So uh, with the sale type, what we can see here is we can choose between uh, the standard tax sale, which is going to be, you know, the regular live sales that they've got scheduled and coming up. A resale, which is similar, you know, it, it will be a, a scheduled auction, but it will be for properties that were offered once before. Uh, and the last one will be the struck off, the properties that are now over the counter. Uh, so you can look according to that. In addition to that, once you select the type of list that you want to use, uh, you can choose the county that you want to search for. Okay, so uh, if I choose uh, you know, a standard sale for Bexar County, 
what it pulls up here is uh, the list for the upcoming auction they've got. So if I'm looking here, I can see uh, that, that for this particular list that pulls up, the sale date is for August 5th. Okay, this is for a sale that's coming up on August 5th. Uh, you know, this is the list of properties that are uh, that are available there. Now, if I wanted to pull up the uh, struck off list, then I'm going to go back, select that option, and I'm going to go back and look at Bexar again. That's the San Antonio area. Uh, that's Bexar County. So uh, when I go to look at the struck off properties, I've got a humongous list here with a with a county that large. And you can see they uh, you can see right there other properties inventory of struck off properties now you can see also you know the information it'll provide us with yeah in fact here is just a section of the list and uh, what i wanted to show you here uh because it's hard to kind of show you the entire list and uh, we'll look more at it uh once we go live with it but uh we can cover a lot of details here right now with this portion of the list, you can see a couple of things. First off, they they provide the most valuable information right there, which is the uh, the adjudged value and the struck off amount. Now that's important because what we're really looking at there is essentially a bid to value ratio. Okay, so uh, what we're looking for is for uh, the best spread. Okay, um, with these being over the counter properties, uh, what we're trying to determine here, I guess, what we're looking for which will kind of depend on what you're looking to invest in. If we're looking for single family homes, then uh, we're looking for properties that are going to have a little bit higher adjudged value. Uh, and we're trying to find ones that have a struck off amount that's reasonable, you know, that, uh, that is an amount that, that would make the investment worthwhile. Uh, if you've got crazy amounts, like in, let's, let's say the numbers that are even right there, uh, obviously $7,000 struck off amount and $7,000 adjudged value, that property is, it's junk. You know, that, that wouldn't make any sense to buy that. Uh, you know, I mean, certainly there are risks involved. Yeah, could you buy the wrong, you know, the wrong property? Yes, you definitely could uh, if you just bought something without really knowing what it was. Uh, even this property down below, you know, you see a $27,000 amount in this uh, $73,000 judged value. Uh, even with a property like that, the numbers are a little bit better, but we really, you know, we really don't know. So if we were looking at this property specifically, uh, you know, we need to be able to dive into greater depth with it, but we also need a fast way of sifting through all of these properties because over-the-counter lists traditionally are going to have a lot higher percentage of junk property, you know, so you need to consider the fact that if you go through 100 properties, uh, you know, you might find that, uh, you know, 80, 90 percent of it might be junk, uh, you know, so you need a, a fairly quick system. It might even be higher than that with some lists, it depends. Uh, you need to, to figure out the fastest way to, uh, to break those down and then to pull up information on the property, which fortunately with a list like this, they provide you with pretty good information. They at least provide you with the, uh, the beginnings of physical address. And you've got, of course, you know, the account number. It doesn't tell you exactly what the property is. But above that, if you can see also uh, above the account number and, and in the middle of this form, it tells you the struck off date. Uh, that tells you how long this particular property has been available as an over-the-counter property. So you can see how long it's been on the books. You know, this property has been on the books for about two months. And we can see we've got a physical address there. What's interesting is you pull the physical address and this property, you can see why nobody purchased it. Uh, it's because the uh, this image... Concrete slab. Yeah, yeah. This image, uh, you know, was, uh, was taken in April of uh, 2013. So... Uh, you know, it's a little more than a year old, but obviously something happened to this property, uh, whether it, it doesn't look like anything burned down, but maybe something burned down. Maybe something was. It could have been some type of prefab home that, that was taken off. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if this property uh, was listed at, at two or three grand or four grand, then you might be able to look at it and say, well, you know, it's a it's a building lot. There's got to be plumbing and sewer and that kind of stuff. So uh, maybe I could put a prefab on there and turn around and sell it. Uh, but when you're looking at absolutely nothing with a $27,000 bid, then it makes the, it makes the investment, you know, yeah. obviously less desirable when you'd want to avoid. Yeah. So, you know, there are a lot of properties, I guess you need to consider the fact that these are properties that have been offered multiple times to sales. And there may be reasons why these properties were not picked up. Uh, that tends to be the nature of over-the-counter 
investing in some areas. Now, that's not going to be the case everywhere, and that doesn't mean you can't still find success with over-the-counter investing. But you are going to have a higher percentage of properties, you know, that are going to have some type of an issue. So uh, it's going to take it's going to take a little bit more due diligence, I think, to uh, to do that. Now, the, on the positive end, you're not up against an auction date, so you're not in a rush to try to get this all done. Uh, you know, it's it's worth it to maybe you know do a, a title search on a property, figure out what's going on with the property. Uh, you don't want to take forever because somebody could buy it out from underneath you. But if it's been available for two months and it's still available right then, then, you know, you may be OK. Well, and, and, and you know, one more advantage as well is if you are going through and doing this due diligence, when you do find a good property, it's going to be a great bid to value ratio. Uh, and so, you know, even though you may need to search through quite a few different properties when you do find one because it was opened at that opening bid price and you're going to be able to pick it up at the lowest possible price uh, you know you might be able to pick up that property for five or six ten percent on its value versus maybe in an auction scenario while you may pay ten to twenty percent yeah absolutely now you know the struck off uh, basically I already talked about the struck off date there We've got that address and we can see that there are uh, different examples there. This list was huge. This list, I mean, you could just keep scrolling down. We'll look at it here in a minute. But uh, in it, there is a lot of junk, you know, and you, you scroll through and you can find properties kind of like this. Now, uh, one of the things you have to look at is this. Normally, we're looking for like a bid to value ratio that's 10 percent. But that's not, you know, when we're looking for that bid to value ratio, that's not based on the assessed value of the property. It's based on what it's estimated to be worth. So the adjudged value isn't necessarily that number. What we need to determine is, is you know, what these properties are assessed to be worth and, you know, what exactly they are. And then we can kind of figure out what that bid to value ratio is going to be. So, uh, you know, with, uh, with this property, we want to use that physical address to see what we can learn about it. That's going to be the fastest bit of information that we can use to, you know, to see what the property is to get a determination on it. So when I pulled up this property's address, um, you know, again, struck off amount 7,400. Uh, you can see the property address here. You can see, you know, the image of the property is between uh, these uh, these two homes. It's, uh, it's really not, I mean, for an over-the-counter property, uh, I don't think that it's it's uh, that it's too bad. I mean, at least not in this image. This image was again April of 2013, so it's about you know a little more than a year old. But uh, you know, it has windows there. It looks like you know there's a car parked there at the time, so maybe somebody was living there at there's the time. Garage, you know, there's uh, garbage cans out front. Mm -hmm. You know, so it very well may have been occupied at that time. That that may mean you know that, that this wouldn't be a bad property if it's been occupied that recently. Um, and you can see that the property, you know, the struck off date on it was uh, was in April. So it's only, you know, it's been on the market for what four months, three or four months now. Um, when I look at the estimated value of the property, I can see the, the Zillow estimates the value would be about seventy six. So when we're looking at that, suddenly that bid to value ratio is right on you know, the market ten percent, and it looks like it, you know it has the chance there to be a good investment. Um, you know, that would be one that, you know, that you would want to uh, start doing more due diligence yeah, on. I mean, even if you took, the, you know, the estimate and the assessed value and kind of split it in half and said it's worth 50000 uh, you could still turn around this and sell this property and make a quick twenty or 30000 mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this property uh, and, uh, you know, also one thing to keep in mind, too, is that, the redemption period on on the property, it's still going to begin on the date of the sale, whether the property sells or not. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have to go back and read county, uh, you know, Texas state law to see if they've got something that says from the date the foreclosure is filed. Yeah, I'd imagine it's that way. You know, uh, the way that the, that the laws are typically written uh, when it comes to the redemption period is that property owners have uh, you know, a, a period of time, it would be six months, you know, from the date of the sale, uh, you know, to redeem, or, you know, they may have a little stipulation in the law where it says six months from the date of the sale, or, uh, you know, 60 days from the, you know, from the time that, that uh, the foreclosure intention is filed, or the foreclosure, somebody makes the intention to, to foreclose on it. What it does is it just tries to give the property owner at least a period of time of, of 
uh, you know, a month, two months, whatever that time period is to pay it off. But you can actually reduce that re the uh, the overall redemption period quite a bit buying it this way. You know, in other words, because uh, it's it's been actually being struck off, it probably doesn't have any redemption period at all now, right? Um, there still might be because it's just there's it's, if it still has a two year redemption period, it's still going to be within that time frame or six month redemption period. Yeah, on but what it is. you will have time so that's elapsed into sale, it. What, it depends on when the sale happened. Yeah, um, you know, chances are that the property is not going to redeem. Some properties you could probably buy, you know, depending on their age, you could probably buy them and own them immediately. You know, some properties you may have to wait. You know, more these are a lot of these are details or questions that you can get answered when you go through some of the details about uh, about the sale. Some of the FAQs, um, you know, they talk about the uh, about the you know the title or the deeds that you'll receive. Um, let's take a look at some others here. You know, so here's another one here: uh, fourteen thousand, thirty-nine thousand dollar judged value. Uh, you know. It's you know kind of a junk property. You can see that that uh, you know why it was overlooked, but it may not necessarily be bad. Who knows? You know you really don't know that much um, about it. You know, but again, just more examples here of what you can find. This was me going through the list and trying to pull out the single family homes. Uh, you know, from the properties that had uh, you know an adjudged value that was equal to the struck off amount. You know, or properties that were obviously not going to work, or that you know would be junk. Um, this was another, you know, another home that's on the list. Uh, this one's another home that's on the list. You know, this is one uh, that uh, that I was pulled up a value on, uh, estimated to be worth about sixty-one thousand. Struck off amount of twelve thousand right now. If if you were looking to do a little bit of cleanup and, and that type of thing, these properties might work out perfect. Though, mm -hmm. it really depends on what your investment strategy is. Or if there's enough profit, you could turn around and sell these to another investor uh, that would go and fix them up. You yeah. Know? So just so we're making this clear, these are properties that are over the counter. These are properties that uh, you can essentially purchase just by making payment arrangements with the county. And the amount will be the struck off amount. Uh, now, that, that uh, certainly you still need to do all of your due diligence. But by paying that amount, they will issue a, a deed to the property. You're the new property owner at that point. Uh, so... You know, these are some amazing deals, especially considering the fact that they're over the counter. And that was just what I was able to look at, uh, you know, in the time that I was scanning through that list. Now, uh, once you get to a point, let's say, where you uh, where you pull up a property address and uh, you can kind of see what it is, you want to try to learn more information about the property. You know, what are some of the next steps? What would you do from there? Well, uh, we've got more information thanks to the list that's available here, we've got the account number, which is like a parcel number. So if we wanted to get additional information, what we really need to find is, you know, the complete property record. And the only way we can get the property record is by going to the county website. So we need to look up and find the county website. Um, now, I don't know, I always do that through NACO, uh, just because I think it's the, the best way to do it. Uh, this is the Bexar County website, uh, finding what we're looking for here should be pretty easy because what we're essentially looking for is a a parcel search tool or a property record search tool or a search tool in general because you can search based on so many different criteria whether it's a person address uh, or property owner we're looking for their records uh, for their records online records and so uh, by going to the tax assessor or collector section we can typically find that Pulled up uh, the uh, the tax assessor collector, and they've got a drop down box here for the most requested links. Search anything that has the word search in it will usually take you to some type of search, you know, uh, record search tool. And the record search tool will give you the ability to look up the uh, the the, you know, the information based on a pretty big criteria. There, you know, you could look uh, based on the owner's name. Uh, property address or the account number. Now we've got the account number, so we hit that option. I, uh, I copy and just I paste in the uh, the number, and what it gives us next is you know the results. Which basically, if there were multiple results uh, there, this is how you would decide which one you know you wanted to uh, to choose. Uh, but in this case, we've only got one, so we're going to click on uh, on that particular result to pull up the property record. 
Now, this is more like a property record overview. This is part of the property record, but it's not the complete record. Um, what we can do here, though, uh, is we can get a lot of valuable information. I mean, uh, this will tell us everything from uh, what was owed, whether or not, I mean, you can see here uh, active lawsuits, no. Uh, you can see payment and when it was owed, but a lot of the really valuable information is uh, is not with this record. If we actually click on the link right there where it says show map, which looking at the county maps is always a good idea if you're interested in a property, but this is also how you access the additional information that they have at the property records. Uh, by clicking on this, we can see the mapping, see how the property, uh, how the land is laid out. Uh, but you can also see where the arrow's pointing there, we've got the details here on the property. We click on the details here for the property, it pulls up a record like this, and this has all the drop down boxes. So we can see all of the information about the property here that the county has. This is at least the most complete uh, type of property record that the county is going to well, have all in one place. We can see at the very top of this one, this property is listed as a retail store. And the owner is Bexar County, which is, you know, it, which means that the county already owns it. So you could purchase it directly through the county. Uh, there probably won't be much of a redemption. Mm -hmm. period. And you can see that the you know county owns the property 100 percent, you know. Um, uh, so, yeah, you can essentially make payment arrangements here, uh, you know, with uh, with the county, you know, if you wanted to buy a, a specific piece. Now, uh, you can also see. All the other things that we could look at, values, taxing jurisdiction, improvement, building, uh, land, roll value history, and deed history. Uh, you know, the deed history is is good because it tells us maybe the last, up to the last three transactions, but you can see what the history is. Um, you know, how many times it's sold and what it's sold for. And from there, you can probably access the actual records for, uh, um, you know, the actual deeds that, uh, that transpired from the sale. So you can see copies of, uh, of that as well. Uh, you know, so this would be, you know, where we would begin to dig into the property information and what we're really trying to determine, we could also find out through uh, through a title search, which, uh, you know, with a lot of these properties, especially the ones like this, a title search would be worth it before you bought. Uh, you know, you're not going to be as likely to need to do a title search on something you're not actually going to buy with an over-the-counter property. So it also makes more sense to do it. Um, but you know you can learn all the details anything you need to find out about the property and what you're really looking for is any other additional uh any other additional fees or taxes anything that could be owed on the property that uh that isn't currently there or that you can't see that's really what you're trying to determine you're trying to determine if there's anything that that you know that you could potentially be responsible for paying now uh, that doesn't mean that anything like that's bad. If you if you were to account for that, like, so let's say you were to look into it and you were to find that there were still $1,000 in municipal fees. Well, if you just account for that and you plan for that in the investment, then it's not really that big of a deal. But if you buy it and then you find out about it later, you know, and, you know, and, it, and you weren't planning out the investment, then it changes all of your numbers and it's a surprise. So that's really the, the main point of it is uh, is by trying to find out about anything that you, you know that you could potentially be liable for if you were to buy the property.